I'm gonna have one more drink. So I searched for a hidden pocket with money. If I don't find any, then I guess I'll go to bed. <laughs> you find a hidden pocket in your cave. It's, ah, it's crazy you've actually had like all of these hidden pockets. In good your old hidden pocket. Always with coin. I completely coin. forgot what you were even wearing. Is this even my cloak? I don't even know if it's your cape. Do you know if it's your cape? It doesn't matter. It's mine now. <laughs> uh, so you're going to get some more drink. Uh, everyone sees that John the Red is drinking some more. Thulgrim Bloodwind has stumbled outside the front door. Um, what are each of your plans? I am planning to go and find a, a roof for an alley to sleep in. I'm just going to go home. I'm going to, I guess, try and find like the local healer, maybe see if there's anything I can do to help until we have to be at the location tomorrow. All right. So um, basically where you're at, you're not going to see any alleyways. Uh, you're surrounded by forestry and grass fields. Uh, the closest thing that you can see that looks like a, another man-made structure is the Blackbrook Keep itself, which is guarded by guards, uh, two per, per gate opening, uh, two guards there with equally large weapons. Um, uh, do I see any, you said we're close to the shore. Do I see any like rocky cave looking places? The shore would be on the other side of Blackbrook Keep from you. Um, and you do, I mean, as you're looking around, you notice the small girl slinking away back towards the gate of Blackbrook Keep. And um, Fulgrim propped up against a large tree right at the, uh, the dirt road that led in to the Wayward Dog. Oh, well, if I see Fulgrim, he's my new axe buddy. I'll go sleep next to another tree near him okay um and soul you like i said uh any kind of healer or anything that you would find would be inside the city um so you would have to get your way inside the city if you were intending to do that um if i can i will still try to do that okay um so we'll go ahead and pursue that john the red stays inside drinking his mead as Rhea, knowing how the gate gods can be this late at night she sneaks over to a secret opening that she made for herself about 10 feet away from the front gate and shuffles in through this opening it's very small you'd have to either be a very small man or a little girl to get through this um, as she sneaks into the gates of the community of Blackbrook Keep. Uh, Thulgrim already starting to snore quite loudly as Aina walks over, feeling not so lonely as he props himself up against the tree with Thulgrim. Um, so you walk up to the gods and they cross these large halberd style uh, axes across each other. Uh, blocking your path in through the city, and they say, State your purpose. I am but a simple man. I seek to get help where I can. Maybe you have healers who are in need of extra hands inside. Maybe blacksmiths who need help. If anybody's looking for any help, I'm sure they'll wait until morning to ask for it. We don't need any callers from the wild coming around here. That is, uh, that is fair, I guess. Um, I appreciate your time, nevertheless. Uh, we are fair. We let strange little ragamuffins keep their heads. I guess I will go find somewhere nice and comfy to sleep. Be gone with you, little boy. I am a man, and everybody always calls me boy. I don't <laughs> understand this. Einar, as you're uh, sitting down next to uh, Bloodwind, you hear the wild snore coming from him. You're going to go ahead and need to roll, and you're going to need to roll for wisdom to see if you can perceive anything around you above the noise of his thunderous roar. We're going to be traveling on the boat to this. 
Uh, that is a minus two plus two. Quick math says zero. All right, so not, not a great roll. Um, not a bad roll. <laughs> so what you're dealing with is uh, as you sit now next to him, and he, I mean, he is just rattling the bark off this tree. He's snoring so loudly. Um, you feel something sting your left arm. It almost feels like you were bitten by um, a bug of some sort. And when you look down, you see the blood trickling from your shoulder and you notice the wound uh, on your shoulder. And as you gaze around, you then are able to perceive the arrow that shot past you at such high speeds to launch itself into the dirt right in front of you. Uh, I'm gonna jump up quickly and ready my ax and yell out, if you want me, come for me. You hear more shuffling in the woods around you as you yell this. Um, you can tell that there are definitely uh, many numbers moving throughout the woods before you. Uh, as I'm yelling that, I'm going to kick Thulgrim's foot. No, no, no. No, that's my no, no, square. Wait, what? What is going yeah. on? We have attackers in the woods. <laughs> attackers, you say? Bring them on. I pull out my axe and my flail. All right. Uh, go ahead and roll me a dexterity. Both of us? Yes. I don't like this roller. I don't think I've rolled a single time that wasn't negative two. All right. Uh, I got a two. So I got a minus one. All right. So as as you stand up ready in your, your flail and your axe, uh, you notice a volley of arrows coming directly at you. And you move to block those arrows with the large double-sided axe that you use. Um, while a few of them pass right by you and are able to pierce Einar Ragnolf. Oh, you're going to pay for that. Show yourselves. Einar, you have an arrow uh, embedded in your shoulder. Uh, how much damage did that do? Um, you're quite a large fella. This arrow is made to take down some heavy game, though, so uh, you would take a stress from it. Okay. Just one. Uh, I rip the arrow out, like you know you're not supposed to do, <laughs> and ready my axe again, and I'm going to start doing this with it. Swinging it around until they patterns. come out of the woods. You put your uh, the, the visor of your your bear cloak down over your face. All right. Um, so you you stand outside the woods. You're not hunting them. Uh, not yet. All right. I so haven't seen anything to, to chase them. off into the woods. They're still shuffling about. They, uh, whoever this is, sees no reason to expose themselves if they're doing just as much damage to you from the shadows. Oh, hey, would I? Can I see if I can see them? Uh, yeah, sure. You can roll for a wisdom. <laughs> nope. Negative one. You're so drunk right now, you're uh, finding it hard to see the axe in your hands. Uh, can I try to see them? You can. Okay. Uh, okay. So that is... Ooh! It wasn't a minus two. Uh, plus one, plus two is three. 
Ah, so using your keen hunter's eye, you notice that there are at least five well-trained hunters moving through the woods around you, some of them trying to maintain some advantage in the branches above, and some of them moving on the ground below. That large tree that you were sitting on? Yeah. It definitely has one in its, in its limbs. Oh. Uh, I'm going to slam my axe with the pick end into the tree. Trying to shake the tree to make them fall out. All right, roll uh, for strength. And we're back to the minus twos. Uh, minus two plus three is one. All right. Well, that's still that's still something. So you uh, you slam the the pick of the axe into the tree, and you manage to get it stuck in there. And you notice that this is a very healthy tree, very healthy rotund tree. Uh, it maintains its roots. Uh, you may have overestimated your ability to rip trees from their roots. Ah, my man has often underestimated trees. Is there someone in the tree? Yes. Then I shall chop it down. Oh, I move. <laughs> That's going to be a two. Wait, hold on. A one. <laughs> so you do take your axe and you slam it into the other side of the tree and the both of you are just sitting there with your axes stuck in this tree uh, ripping at it one way or another just screaming at the tree now Sol you're standing about a good 15 yards away from them but you, you can tell as you look that these two are just like trying to attack a tree and yelling at each other about the tree uh, trying to hurt them I I will never understand male bonding. I mean, this is... I'm, I'm going to get about, we get a little bit closer. That you and I, you all need any help, maybe a quieter place to sleep. I mean, you guys are being very disruptive right now. I mean, look, there's people trying to sleep, I'm sure, somewhere around here. Uh, as he walks up, get down, they're shooting at us. The trees? Yes. The trees are sh- I mean, I'm gonna try and I've had the I'll acorn hit me on the head, but I wouldn't say the tree was shooting at me. While they're talking, I'm going to try and chop the tree again. All right. Five. You managed to uh, retrieve your axe from the tree, pull back, and swing with such monstrous force that you... You completely sever the trunk of this tree and cause it to fall. But as it does, you notice that there is a warrior hidden in the trees dressed very similar to Ragnall as he launches down with daggers born and uh, tries to stab them into your back. He's now uh, attached to your back trying to thrust these daggers into you. And I try to make an attack. You sure can. I am going to run up and, I guess, use the tree as a launching point, this new fallen trunk, to land my left hand on the back of this piggybacker's skull. All right. So, begin to cook his brains. Roll, uh, roll your dexterity for that. Oh, that's very nice. Hold on a second. That is a four. All right. So, yeah, you managed to do this um, as you run up to launch yourself off of the fallen trunk of the tree. Uh, You can tell there's like a dizzy, confused look on Fulgrim's face as he just sees you scurrying about him. And he thinks that, well, maybe you're going to attack him, but then you flip <laughs> over his head. So this very tiny person is able to launch himself quite high 
as you grab hold of the warrior that's attached to his back, your hand burning a bright reddish uh, glow as it melts the person's brain within his skull and he howls out into the night, a blood curdling scream as he falls like a dead flea from Bulgrim's back. I would like to whisper as he's dying, shh, embrace the flame. It will only hurt if you resist. I uh, look down. Where did do that I, come from? Do I recognize the hunter? You do. <laughs> We're dead. He was a young uh, friend of yours, actually. He used to go on the hunt with you. Oh, that makes me sad. Are you I, big men? I, I tell them, my party, please don't kill them. They, they only chase me because... They have to. I think it's a little too late. To Don't kill them. But they're I've... trying to kill me. I will slay them. They've already melted one one's head. I cannot. There's no going back from what I just saw. Okay. Well, it was awesome. That that was awesome, and I hope I, it's no, I did off it. the rest, but. I, I doubt it. They, you do they can't hear really go uh, home the, without my head. You hear somebody shuffling in the distance, uh, foliage underfoot. You can tell that they are running at high speed, right at y'all, uh, right at all three of you at this moment. Okay, I'm gonna try and intercept. With can I? Have I already gotten my axe out of the tree? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to try and intercept with the flat side of my axe. All right. So with speed, I guess? Uh, sure. All right, so roll a dexterity on that. That is plus one, plus one, is plus two. All right. So basically as this other hunter starts coming up to you, um, y'all manage to lock weapons together. So you strike with your axe and he strikes with his as well the hooked blade of the axe actually links together and y'all sit there uh fighting with brute strength pulling against each other as you stumble back towards the wayward dog you said stumble back towards where the wayward dog okay the bar please don't do this I, I promise what I am doing is for the good of the clan. For everyone else, as they hear this, it seems to be that Einar is speaking in a strange uh, foreign tongue. As the other gentleman responds to him, many of you can't understand, but he says, For the good of the tribe, we do what we must. You turned your back on us, and you must be dealt with as any, any traitor would be handled. And it seems that death stalks you this night. If he and stalks me, he'll take you with me, friend. I uh, drop one hand off of the axe and try to backhand him. Right, go for a strike. So that's going to be plus one, plus three is four. You manage to connect with the full side of his head, not just his face, like his whole head. You just backhand straight into his head. Uh, you can hear his jaw snap out of place as he launches through the front door of the wayward dog. As John the Red drinks his mead, he sees this wild man uh, skid across the floor, spitting blood from his mouth as he hits against the bar stool you're sitting at. I think that was directed at you, John the Red. Yeah, John, John the Red. Oh, I'm sorry, I was just admiring my axe. What? What happened? Yeah, dude, there's a big bloody man that just crashed through the front door. and. Uh, so I, I just crashed through the front door, is what you're telling me? I'm a big bloody man. No, another big bloody man. Oh, another one. Yes. So my brother, what happened? 
<laughs> he might he might be your brother. Somebody attacked your brother. So I like I, I go to investigate. It doesn't <laughs> doesn't take much to get outside and you notice that uh, right outside is the man that you think you saw sometime before. Uh, Einar Bear Man. Yeah, right. Saw that time? Hmm. Yeah, he was from some time. You don't really remember. So do I still have both of the axes? Yes. So who is the man that, who is the bloody man that is me? Wait, do you ask that out loud? Yes. That is my friend. He's trying to kill me. Ah, oh, lovely friends you have. Ah, it's, I want to be your friend. It's the way of life in my village. It looks like you, uh, he did, he's, he did, he failed. You're still uh, alive. For the moment, his other friends may succeed where he failed. Sounds like a fun battle. Do you mind if I join? The more the merrier. All right, I, Please well, don't well, kill them. Uh, it would my leave, axe out. It would leave very little fun for later if you kill all of the people who pursue us. Hey, don't kill all of them. How many do you want me to kill? Just the ones you have to. All right, so all of them. I'm kind of confused right now. How about I kill 99% of them? While we're talking, I'm holding both of the pole axes and looking out towards the woods. Uh, if you can make that percentage out of four people, three, I think now, then Go for it. All right. I will kill three out of four people. We kill three, not two, not four. Five is right out. What if there are more than four? Five is right out because Saul already took one. All right. So I'm still too far from to hear them, right? Um, you're only a few feet away. You can you can hear them uh, talking about killing. But not all of the killing. Most of them. Most of them, though, right? I, need I will blood. slay any they, any that come towards me. Hey. And those words you used earlier, I didn't know you were a scholar, because I did not understand anything you said. They will have to agree with the tall one. I mean, unfortunately, my dear friend, all these people, they must be reduced to ash and returned to the Great Flame. This is the way. Yes, son. I will this help you way. return them. <laughs> Please do not call me son. You are just a boy. I call all boys son. But I am a man. How many times? I will show you. I can prove to you I am a man. No, no, no. That's unnecessary. Well, then let's call me man and not boy. I, I, I can't call you that because you haven't proven me. I love that we're having this conversation while there's hunters looking at us. And on that note, I'm going to look to the forest. And, and I'm still holding the two axes. It kind of looks like a dust of barely lit embers to send it out into the woods to try to illuminate it so we can see better. Okay, so you all step into the woods to try and see uh, who's running them out. Yeah. All right. I, um, I have no idea what's going on. I will follow you, uh, son, wherever you go. Uh, this old guy is going to get on my nerves. I can tell. I should have just stayed in my mountain. Ah, you're from the mountain, you say? Yes. Please, let's let's just air quotation not kill your friends. The mountain. Well, Which mountain? We'll talk about this later. I feel like there's more pushing issues at hand right now. The only problem with killing them is I have to bury them after. Look, either we do this clean or I burn this whole forest down. I don't care either way. It will give way for new life. If you burn them, I don't have to bury them. 
So be it. I'm going to <laughs> slam my hand down and try, try to, to the ignite much of the forest on fire as I can. Oh no! Uh, Roll. Uh, can I react to that? <laughs> you might be able to. Uh, we shall see. Um, so go ahead. Uh, you're going to roll that off of the Constitution. Mm-hmm. So your your own Constitution is going to be what you're going to roll that off of. That is a five. I don't think I can react to that. If you want, uh, if you want me to screen share my dice. No, no, no that's fine. Uh, Einar, uh, you're going to need to roll. How are you planning on reacting to this? I was going to try and like grab his hand. To All right, stop so him. roll with minute. your dexterity. Speed of movement, I guess. Okay, so minus one plus one is uh, zero. You are not able to stop him. Uh, and as you reach out to do so, you do get burned. Um, you notice the very hot uh, atmosphere around him as he slams his hand into the ground, igniting all of the grass, the trees. Um, you can hear the snapping bark of some nearby ferals as they uh, start to run away from the area. Um, as good, I mean, if I was dealing in cosmic centimeters, this is a good chunk of the woods that just got uh, lit up. That was a very precise measurement. Yeah, it's good. Good twenty foot radius, completely around you, that is now uh, scorched. I'm gonna try and get out of the fire because I've heard that it's not good to stand in the fire. Yes, actually, Bloodwind, John Red, and Ina Ragnoff, go ahead and roll your dexterity again to evade the fire. I have a problem. I don't know my dexterity, three. but I will roll. Uh, pick a three, a two, or a one. Three sounds good. <laughs> oh, <laughs> You will be a very dexterous man. Uh, I will go ahead and write down your numbers as we go. That's a very good roll. <laughs> John the Red got a seven on his dex check. Did he? <laughs> John the Red. The like Red green. runs like a madman. He's he knows he is doused in alcohol. Is, yeah, he's just. He even he takes his axe sword and he throws it into the ground and uses it to pole vault himself to safety, doing a, a little flip at the end, landing and sticking the landing completely. <laughs> I even have time to flip off uh, whoever's following me. <laughs> uh, Bloodwind, what did you get? I got a three. All right, so you okay. managed to... Uh, not quite as gracefully as John the Red, but you uh, you barrel out of there as you feel the heat snipping at your hinds, um, and you just tuck and roll into the ground. I was very close to the epicenter of this, which Good. helps to explain my negative one. <sighs> That's uh, all right, negative one. Um, and you had rolled a five there, Soul? Yes. Three plus two. All right. So, yeah. That's I don't gonna think be I even stress. tried to get out yet. <laughs> yeah. So go ahead and um, just move that on up to some damage. Uh, put that at light damage. You have been burned. Burned. Sol, you do notice that he is uh, smoldering at about 10 feet away from you. I will approach him. And in the same manner, not with just him, but with the entire area. Once I can tell, I guess, that there's not a lot of danger going on, the heat, the flame seems to subsequently just die down, almost as if, like, an exhale of life. 
I am sorry, friend. You get too close to flame, you get burned. It's common sense. I and I, we can go check for bodies. You said you didn't want anyone to die. Maybe if they did die, it was quick death. Not always. I mean, burning is a terrible way to go. I mean, look at your other friend. I mean, like a lobster, his brain was. It even screamed on its own. But this is why... Oh, uh, I almost forgot. I say a little, like, psalm of prayer. You know, just ushering the new life and acknowledging the sacrifice of the old. I just want to hit someone. You can hit me, son, if you want. I can take it. Um, I will uh, try to help uh, Ragnolf off the ground. I appreciate okay. your bravado, but you're an ally. Um, I, I cautiously reach out and grab your hand. I, 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 I last I, time I did that. It's yeah, with my. It's the right hand. Don't worry, you're okay. Um, I could say I could help you. I am a healer of sorts, but my methods, I think, yeah. would not help here, unfortunately. I've known a healer who burned people. We didn't keep him in the village long. That's unfortunate. Maybe he, I know him. He mostly just cauterized wounds. No. Then maybe he is familiar with my methods. Uh, that was his son. Oh, well, I guess I cauterized his existence. You appear to have. Uh, it would be a good burial to burn him if we can get him oh. on fire. I mean... Okay, I think I've shown more well enough that I can manage this thing. So stand back. Uh, bite a moment while I go and grab his friend, my friend. Oh, are we doing a mass burning? No, I don't think he's dead. I didn't hit him that hard. Oh, okay, cool. So I will. You grab him. I, I, I go grab the friend that's probably still laying unconscious on the floor of the wayward dog. I and bring him out so that I can show him that I'm still honoring the burial custom of our people. Uh, you, you drag the bloody man from the bar. Uh, John the Red, you definitely notice that he has taken the, the man who looks a lot like you, covered in blood, uh, and he's dragging him from out the bar, and he's holding his head up as he grabs his hair and says, Look, I'm doing what we are supposed to do. Um... As I approach the uh, unfortunate soul that I killed, I place my hand upon his chest and I say, I hope your suffering was not prolonged given the uh, course of your death, but just know that the spark that is your soul, it will be reignited It will join the flame. And I light him on fire. I, uh, I am surprised that all that blood is going to waste. But I understand. I'm sorry. This is kind of a very sentimental thing for me to do here. You know, the prayer and... Yes, that's the understanding part. I understand. I'm just saying. All that blood. I mean... It's not useful. It's good for the skin. They, uh, well, I mean, what about the other one that's still alive? I mean, he's got a lot of blood, too. Oh, yeah, he does, but I can't kill him. You know, I, I mean, know he... says who? Well, I was told I shouldn't. Said me. I mean, I need him maybe to I could witness. Just take a little bit of the. Blood. Did I, I? I was present for the whole. You know, only three out of four can die, right? Yes. I uh, don't remember hearing any screams in the forest fighters. So that I mean, that means there's still three lives that are on the chopping block here. But we only have two now. Well, well, I can't kill them if they're not attacking me. That's the thing. So. Oh, you're one of those type. That's that's understandable. What do you mean by one of those, son? Oh, let's not make this like that, okay? You just you're not going to attack someone that you don't deem as a threat. It's fine. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. You would. I mean, 
Is that what you're saying? I, Maybe I'm thinking of you as a threat right now. I I mean, the last guy who attempted that, I mean, he's he's ashes now. I typically, you know... You're threatening avoid... me, son? No, big red man. I, I just typically avoid crowds. Sorry, I... Okay. Please. My That's speaking cool. is not... My speaking is... I. I, I the social skills, I lack them. I'm sorry. Yeah, all right. I'll pick... Don't you... fight at Rylar's funeral. I'm sorry, what, what's his name? You're right. You're right. We should Rylar. respect it. We Rylar? should respect it. At the same time, understanding that it's a loss of blood. Well... When I finally ascend and become a god, I will make sure to honor him. I appreciate that. Have you, you uh, God. You notice as you try to collect what bodies you do find that whoever was here definitely cleared the area when they saw these fire magics being used. And you're still quite offset by some of the, the things that you've seen Saul do. Um, yeah. This isn't commonplace. Um, I'm gonna tiny package, big reward. That's all I'm saying. Speaking of tiny packages, once the body <laughs> has been fully burnt, I'm gonna wrap it up in oh, oh, sorry. Some sorry. cloth. Wrap the bones up and give it to uh, do I know the name of the other guy that I bloodied? Uh, the one that's uh, still the alive. Still alive. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dolgrom goes back to sleep. Do I notice any leftover ashes on the ground, by chance? There are. There are ashes. Uh, there's a lot of ash. I look around and piled up on the ground. I look around, take a pinch of his friend's ashes, and eat it. And eat Don't. it. Yes. He's not going to notice that because I'm busy bagging up the bones uh, to get it. You're bagging up the bones and you hand it over to uh, Cub. And if you used to call him Cubby. Mommy, you to yourself. We could hear the crunching. Give it to Cubby and tell him to take Rylar back to the village and tell his father that I'm sorry but I don't think he'll be able to cauterize this. You know that we are far from finished. I trust that. The ends of the earth will not be far enough for you to go, for us not to venture that same path and find you. I trust that as well. Hopefully I have finished my task before you catch up to me. I don't think I will be as lucky next time. He takes the bones from you and he uh, stomps off into the darkness of the woods. I would like to also pocket a little bit of his friend's ashes into a little pouch for later. Oh, uh, it will be good to remember him, yes. Yes, remembering him. I won't use them as cosmetic enhancement. I, no, 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 never mind, never mind. I, I, As y'all continue to debate the uh, cosmetics of blood and ash, uh, the thunderous snoring of Thulgrim Bloodwind continues in the background as he's now propped up against a big burnt log. Uh, I guess I should probably ask this. Ragnolf, was it? Uh, well, I guess it'd be kind of silly, I imagine, any of your wounds would be cauterized now, wouldn't they, from being burnt by being uh, so close. I, I kind of already looked like I was cauterized. It's silly of me to ask. I'm, I will go and inspect uh, Thogram while he is sleeping, see if he has any wounds. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, what's your plan for the evening? Uh, you probably have about five hours left before the source, uh, the source father rises again. Uh, I am going to 
try to do a little bit of medicine on myself. Uh -huh. Basically, just grab a leaf, crush it up a little bit, and press it against the burn. All right, uh, John the Red. Uh, I think it's time for me to hit the hay. So I'm going to find a nice haystack. <laughs> there seems to be uh, a large pile of grass uh, pumped up right near Thulgrim Bloodwind. Uh, I'll puff it up a little bit and then uh, lay my head to rest. Must All right. Uh, you see, a group so on you, a barn. You curl up. Always leaving right? doors open. You curl up in a ball next to Thulgrim uh, on the grass, and uh, Saul, what's your business? Uh, I guess I will find a nice hearth to curl up by and sleep. Okay, so you're going to prop up next to them, but not too close? No, a, a hearth, like a fireplace. Oh, um, yes. again, you'd have to get inside the city. Thanks. So wait, the uh, Wayward Dog wouldn't have like a... There Earth? might be a fireplace inside the way the dog. Um, is it, I'm guessing it's still. I'm gonna go there and try to get some sleep at near the fire, okay. I guess. All right. Well, that sounds like uh, a good place. I did get a plus one on that medicine check. Good. You will need rest too.